Welcome to Air and Space Forces Magazine. I'm Tobias Nagley, Editor-in-Chief. Edge computing, the devices embedded in all manner of modern weapon systems, are the brains that make possible the speed and precision of modern warfare. Mercury Systems is a leading innovator in this crucial sector, leveraging the best commercial technologies to gain maximum advantage for U.S. and allied warfighters. I'm joined now by Roger Wells, who became Mercury's Chief Operating Officer earlier this year. Roger. Hi, Welcome. Tobias. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So let's start with just at what, what is happening now in, in uh, edge computing and what's sort of driving the, what the pressing needs are and why that's important. Yeah, so you know, we find ourselves in a really dynamic time. Technology is evolving extremely quickly, as is the threats uh, and challenges that we, we find out on the, the, the battle space, especially as we look to combat peer and near peer adversaries in a contested uh, environment. Being able to have integrated uh, processing platforms and management systems at the edge in order to prosecute missions very quickly uh, is gonna be incredibly and, and increasingly important. Um, but also, as we think about uh, extending our partnerships with our international allies, as we think about having more extendable and, and attributable uh, platforms on the battlefield, it's gonna be increasingly important to make sure that our systems are built with security in mind, anti-tamper and cyber resiliency, uh, very quick processing timelines to make sure that we're uh, countering the, uh, the threats that we find, especially from uh, advanced radar and, and missile systems, electronic warfare, uh, and, and other cyber capabilities. So having the processing capability at the edge uh, that spans from signal acquisition and conversion to processing, data management and distribution into display, is going to be necessary on, on a contested battlefield. Really what we're doing with our embedded uh, processing platform is working to ensure that we can very quickly, very rapidly transform the data that we collect from the environment into actionable decisions uh, in, in a timeline and a time constant that increases survivability. So Roger, you talked about a spectrum of capabilities. What are those capabilities and how do they fit together? And which parts of the ecosystem do they connect? Yeah, that's a great question. So the spectrum of capabilities that we've assembled cuts across a wide variety of, of uh, elements of the processing chain. Everything from signal collection and conversion to processing, data management and distribution displays, all the way through fully integrated mission computing solutions. We've assembled those as individual components that are modular and, and open in nature, but together they comprise the Mercury processing platform. And that Mercury processing platform is what gives us the capability of, of really prosecuting time critical, uh, mission critical operations at the edge. Now, the technologies that compose that run the gamut from small mimic based components to system and packaging and uh, advanced processing boards at the edge and, and embedded uh, computing, heads up displays and, and other display architectures, data devices and data recording. Uh, so it's a broad range of, of technology that we've put together and assembled as part of uh, this processing capability. And they're all plug and play compatible. Yeah, they're all plug and play compatible. You know, one of the most important things that, that is, is needed as we think about modernization and, and readiness is compliance with standards, whether they're security and, and information assurance, safety, open system standards like MOSA and SOSA, but done in a way that we can not only provide modular capability based upon our customers' needs, things that are easily incorporated into their existing architectures, as well as wholesale processing solutions that are designed to solve really, really challenging problems uh, in time critical ways. Um, you know, when I look at the breadth of, of deployment of Mercury technology, either as components or as part of the Mercury processing platform, you know, we're on over 300 defense programs in the U.S. and uh, across our, our international allies. Uh, some examples are our radi radiation tolerant uh, solid state data recorders on SDA's new uh, missile tracking satellites. Mm -hmm. We've got electronic and processing modules uh, on the next generation of strategic weapons programs. We've got signal conversion and processing capabilities as part of Blue Halo solution to modernize the satellite ground control network. And then we've got RF technologies 
uh, helping to, to process radar and EW data on fourth and fifth generation fighter aircraft, as well as ISR platforms like the F-35, F-16, and Global Hawk. So we have a wide variety of, of technologies that are modular and independent, but also to be able to be integrated into a processing architecture that uh, is mission ready and, and easily integrated into our customers' architectures. And, and a huge range of applications. Huge range of applications. Uh, you know, obviously we uh, were very involved in, in the aviation and space-based markets, but Mercury technology finds its way across all domains and all missions to include, uh, you know, certainly the airborne and space, but maritime, underseas, uh, land-based uh, processing architectures and, and uh, missions that, that span uh, EW, radar, um, missile and weapon systems, uh, a whole gamut of uh, C3I uh, capabilities as well. You know, we're really providing the processing architecture that supports uh, the time-critical processing of information at the edge, again, in order to rapidly transform data into, into actionable uh, intelligence. So as you've acquired all of these companies, mm -hmm. how do you maintain kind of the mercury secret sauce? I mean, you can, the company is 40 years old, but the, the various pieces aren't all, all, all the same age and they weren't all one company. How have you done that? Yeah, so, so through, through several different ways. First, we, uh, we've executed a, a series of restructuring within mercury to bring those acquisitions closer. Right. You know, it was uh, very much a decentralized model where we had really site based uh, operations and activities through this restructuring. We brought everybody together in a very integrated and centralized way in order to enhance our ability to respond to the needs of our customers, but leverage the true power of, of our technology and our mission oriented thinking across uh, across the market. Uh, this also allows us to more effectively deploy resources to the most pressing and critical uh, needs that our customers have, especially given some of the demanding and challenging uh, schedules that, that are needed. But what we do as a company is really make sure that we have very well-aligned, integrated strategic product development roadmaps and technology development roadmaps that guide how we go about creating the capabilities that we do and ensuring that they're integrated across the Mercury processing platform. And that processing platform really gives us the opportunity to bring all of the breadth and capability from all the acquisitions, all the organic development that we've done in order to solve those really complex, challenging operational problems that can only be done at the edge. So you talked about the, the reorganization and business reorganizations mm -hmm. are fascinating to business people and, and you're an engineer by training, probably not necessarily the most exciting thing for, for engineers or even necessarily obviously clear to, to, to a program manager at, at, you know, at the level you were early in your career. Why are those changes that you talked about important to them? How, do you, how, how does that make you more effective for your customer? Yeah, so it comes down to predictable performance, right? Being able to deliver consistently at a high degree of quality at the ramp and rate and scale that our customers need to feel the capabilities um, on, on a, in a timely way and to the platforms that they need. So the activities that we're, we're doing from a corporate restructuring perspective are intended to do that. They're intended to improve our ability to meet our obligations and uh, to uh, deliver uh, against the commitments that we've made, really working to increase customer satisfaction and uh, enhance uh, the expectations that, that we're working with our customers. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting mission capability out to the field as quickly as possible uh, in order to give our forces uh, the tactical advantage on the battle space. Um, so as we think about how we're restructuring the company, as we think about how we're organizing and building a business model, we want it to be customer facing, we want it to represent how we interact and evolve with our customers to ensure that we've got technology that's aligned with their roadmaps and aligned with the programmatic development schedules that are being uh, worked. But again, in a way that, that really works to pre create innovative technology that's mission ready and capable of being fielded in both current as well as next generation platforms. Okay, Roger Wells. Mercury Systems, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Tobias. It's been a pleasure.